In a world full of mathematical expressions, there are terms and there are factors. Let's talk about the difference between terms and factors. In mathematical expressions, terms are separated by subtraction or addition, addition or subtraction. In this uh, expression here, we see three separate terms, x squared, 10x, and 9. Factors are separated by multiplication and division. And in this example, we see 3 is a factor, and so is 5x plus 8. It's a factor that's raised to the fourth power. Factors can be parts of can be a part of terms, and terms can be a part of factors. So essentially what, I, what I'd like to talk about is the relationship between those two. So, so x squared, I can think of that single term as x times x. So x is a factor within that term. Similarly, we can think of 10 times x as 10 times x. So 10 is a factor, and, and so is uh, x. We could also think of 2 as a factor, because 10 splits into 2 times 5, and 5 is a factor. And 9, we could think of that as 3 times 3. So those would be factors of the term 9. So within a term, you can have factors. And within a factor, you can have terms. In, in this uh, factor here, 5x plus 8, we can think of 5x as a term and 8 as a term. And so terms and factors are really kind of relative to the expression overall. Um, and so if, if something is separated from something else by uh, addition or subtraction, we can think of those two things as terms. And if things are separated by multiplication or division, we can think of those aspects of the, uh, as factors. So what's useful, I think, in understanding algebraic operations and, and how to work with mathematical expressions you need to understand how terms and factors interact. And part of what that's built on uh, is, is what they mean. So, so factors are related to multiplication, terms are related to addition. Multiplication, though, at its heart is, in some ways, it's a summary of addition. If I repeat addition, if I choose some value, I'll call it x. If I add that over and over again, rather than writing that a, a ton of times, I could write that rather as, well, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five x's, and so whatever the value of x is, I can think of that as five times x. So multiplication kind of summarizes that addition. And for that reason, you know, if I had two x plus three x, those two terms can be combined. They're called like terms because this represents x plus x, that represents x plus x plus x, and so they would also represent 5x. So we can, in a sense, we can sort of factor the x out away from those two parts of the expression and think of this as 2 plus 3 times x. And so going in that direction from here to there, we would call this factoring, factoring out the x. Uh, going back the other way, uh, if I start with 2 plus 3 times x, I could turn that into 2x plus 3x by distributing. So because of the essential nature of what multiplication and addition represent, um, we can distribute a multiplication across terms, or we can factor a common factor away from terms. Exponents are a summary of multiplication. I mentioned just a moment ago that x times x, I can write that as x squared. In a similar way, the expression 5x plus 8 to the fourth power means 5x plus 8 times 5x plus 8 four times. So that exponent of 4, it's really a summary of 5x plus 8 times itself four times. Let's talk about some do's and don'ts when working with factors and terms. In this first expression, there are essentially two factors, 5 and a plus 2b, but the a plus 2b appears three times in the expression because of the exponent 3. The 5 only appears once, 
and when there's not an explicit exponent, that's always the situation. We, we could write an exponent of 1 there. So something to avoid, what you don't want to do is think of these as compatible because the 5 only has an exponent of 1 and the, and the other part of the expression has an exponent of 3, it would be wrong to say that that expression is the same as 5a plus 10b cubed. I can't bring something raised to the first power inside the parentheses uh, when that other thing is raised to the third power because this now means that the 5 is multiplied three times within the expression. So this is really the same as 5 cubed times a plus 2b cubed. And that's not the same as the original expression. So, so be aware, don't uh, try to bring a 5 inside or a constant number inside or, or an expression that's not raised to the same power inside parentheses when there is an exponent um, there. Another issue that sometimes causes trouble is distributing the exponent across the terms, which is not allowed. So it wouldn't be correct. It's not correct to say that that expression that's given is the same as a cubed plus 2b cubed. And the reason why is because you know what this means, this expression really means 5 times a plus 2b times a plus 2b times a plus 2b and so if we were to multiply this out carefully we would end up with an a cubed part and we would end up with a 2b cubed part but there would also be these mixed terms where we take the a from the first appearance of the factor times 2b uh, in the second appearance and so there would be these sort of a and b mixed together what I, what I call mixed terms of a times 2b. In the second expression, to highlight something that we are allowed to do, we can say that this is equal to 3y to the fifth power over x squared to the fifth power. So while we can, sorry, while we can't distribute exponents across terms, we can distribute exponents across factors. This is one of the important reasons why understanding the difference between factors and terms matters a lot in, in working with algebraic expressions, because you can do some, some things with factors that you might not be able to do with terms, and, and the other way around might apply as well. There, there might be some things you can do with terms that you can't do in the same way with factors. So we can split the exponent across division because division separates factors. In a similar way we can split the exponent across multiplication because multiplication separates factors. And so the top could be written as 3 to the fifth times y to the fifth and in the denominator the x squared really represents x times x represents a pair of factors and then we're saying that x times x appears actually five times. We have x times x times x times x times itself, you know, five times. So that means we can raise x to the tenth power, multiplying the two exponents together. And since 3 to the fifth is 243, we could write this as 243 times y to the fifth over x to the tenth. It turns out square roots are very much like exponents. Uh, in fact, the square root of m plus 4 is the same as taking m plus 4 and raising it to the 1 half power. And so I wanted to mention in a similar way that we can't distribute we can't distribute exponents across terms, if you have two terms in a square root, it would not be true. We can't say that that's the same thing as the square root of m plus the square root of 4. Um, in fact, in general, that's not going to be true. And we can see that with an example, the square root of 16 plus 9. That is equal to the square root of 25, which equals 5. But if I take the square root of 16 plus the square root of 9, I get 
Well, the square root of 16 is 4, because 16 is 4 squared. The square root of 9 is 3, and that equals 7. So uh, splitting a square root across terms is not going to give you the same value in general. Um, and certainly when you have an unknown variable like m, um, it doesn't make sense. It wouldn't be valid to split it across terms. A couple other issues that I wanted to mention related to working with terms and, uh, and factors have to do with fractions. So fractions are, are sometimes intimidating and we'd like to make them as simple as we can, but we have to be careful. So in this example, it wouldn't be true. I can't I can't cancel the x up top and the x in the denominator. Even though they look the same, the x in the denominator is a term, not a factor. Right? So this x uh, is a term. And so it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't work, actually. It's not equal. It's not true to say that this would be 1 over 1 plus 8, where we could cancel those x's, because it's not valid. We can't cancel terms. On the other hand, we can cancel factors. So in the next expression we see that 4 over 4c minus 12, well 4 is actually a factor of both the numerator and the denominator. Because I can think of this expression as 4 over 4 times c and 12 is 4 times 3 so I could write this as 4 times c minus 3, and then we can cancel the 4 from the top with the 4 in the denominator. Of course, I want to put a 1 as a placeholder in the numerator, and so this would be the same as 1 over c minus 3. So this is an important issue related to fractions. You want to be careful that you don't accidentally cancel two things that are terms, but you are allowed, we can cancel common factors from the numerator and denominator of a rational expression. So I think it's pretty important to, to keep in mind and think about the, the terms that exist in an expression and the factors that exist in an expression. And it can be kind of subtle because, like I said earlier, terms can be within factors. Right? So we can think of A and 2B as um, as terms within that factor, and terms can also be made up of factors. So factors can be nested within terms, and terms can be nested within factors. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.